Hi there, welcome to Nappy Invest. We all have biases and sometimes our biases can have an effect on our investing decisions. And one of the things I really like to do is to question, question the biases I do have. And one of those biases I do have in regards to investing is I am quite anti ASX 100 companies. Now, not completely. There are a few companies among the biggest on the ASX that I actually do like, including CSL. But in my opinion, generally, the majority of companies on the ASX 100 are not investable companies for my own investing philosophy. Some of the things I look for for investable companies are revenue growth, net profit after tax growth, and operating cash flow growth. And I believe, because of my bias, the majority of companies on the ASX 100 do not fit into that category. Now, to challenge my bias, I've decided to look at 10 companies on the ASX chosen at random. And in the first video, I looked at five companies, and this is the second video. So I'll look at another five companies. The first five companies I looked at included Computer Share. Spark New Zealand, Transurban, Brambles, and Linus. And to be honest with you, none of these companies, apart from mainly Linus, really challenged my bias. In fact, in when I did look at quite a few of these companies, it really upheld my bias. I saw exactly what I thought I would see. For instance, Spark New Zealand hasn't seen any revenue growth over the past 10 years. That is something I expected to find uh, in quite a few companies in the ASX 100. Now, as I move on to the next five companies, which will feature Sonic Healthcare, Mineral Resources, Lendlease, CleanAway, Vicinity Centers. Will my bias hold up for all these companies? So what I'm gonna do, just like the previous video, is I'm gonna look at the financial state of each company, look at the revenue, operating cash flow, profit after tax this year, compare it to uh, 10 years ago, look at the valuation metrics, and then finally look at the sentiment by looking at the chart. If the share price is going up, that has positive sentiment. If the share price is going down, that is negative sentiment. First company I want to look at is Sonic Healthcare, T code SHL, and I have never looked at this company in the past. And as soon as I saw they are in medical diagnostics, I thought this company would have experienced significant tailwinds over the past two years. So I did have actually have a look at their financial year 21 numbers and compare it to financial year 20. And this company has experienced significant growth in the past year. Revenue up 28%, EBITDA up 81%, profit up, up 149%, and operating cash flow up 50%. And that does make me a little bit wary, particularly if the market um, is expecting those sort of tailwinds to continue uh, in the medium to short term. But I don't think that's what the market is doing with Sonic Healthcare, and I'll explain uh, in a few slides. The market cap of this company, $18.8 billion, that's at a share price of $39.11. But the main thing when I look at revenue, a profit after tax, and operating cash flow for financial year 21 and compare it to financial year 2011, I do find something I want to see in companies that are investable for me. That's revenue growing, net profit after tax growing, and operating cash flow growing. Revenue has grown from 3.1 billion to 8.8 billion. Profits grown from 300 million to 1.3 billion. And operating cash flow has grown from 400 million to 2 billion. That's exactly what I want to see an investable company. Net debt, uh, 1.6 billion, not too high, so it's definitely manageable for this sort of company. And when you look at their evaluation metrics, price to operating cash flow, 9.2. P ratio seems to be quite low at 14.3, and price to sales ratio at 2.11. And compare that to where you historically find those sort of metrics for Sonic Healthcare. For instance, P ratio tends to be between about 15 and 23. You might think there is some good value here. But I think what's happened is this company has experienced a lot of tailwinds over the past 18 months, and the market doesn't believe those tailwinds will continue in the future. So more than likely, the market is expecting financial year 22 numbers for Sonic Healthcare to be potentially lower than they were in financial year 21, because those tailwinds 
um, will come to an end uh, soonish rather than later. And you can definitely see how much of the tailwinds that have been behind this business over the past two years. When you compare the growth rates of revenue, operating cash flow, and profit between 2011 and 2019, which is pre-COVID, and then the growth rates of those three metrics since COVID-19. For instance, revenue, operating cash flow, and profit have all grown between about 8 and 9.5% per year. That's actually okay growth. It's about average growth. Uh, but when you compare that to the growth over the past two years, we have seen revenue grow at 20%, operating cash flow at 55%, and profit at 55%. The other thing to notice here, between 2011 and 2019, market cap of Sonic Healthcare has grown at 12.5% per year, and share price has grown at 9.8% per year, which is very comparable to how revenue, operating cash flow, and profit has grown. So there's been very well, there was very little multiple expansion in Sonic Healthcare between 2011 and 2019. That's exactly what you want to see. You want to see a company being too hyped up uh, because that's when the share price can get well ahead of itself. So I do think uh, the trading of this company was very orderly uh, up until 2019. And over the past two years, the market cap is up at 19.5% and share price up 19%, well lower than what we've seen operating cash flow and profit growing. So again, that is telling us the market is not convinced that the operating cash flow, profit and revenue will grow at the rates we've seen over the past two years. But I still think it's growing a little bit too quick. And if we do see Sonic Healthcare financial numbers take a little bit of a dip in 2022, 2023, there is potential we might see the share price pull back. The other thing you'll notice is that the market cap has grown at a greater rate than share price. And the main reason behind that is this company has increased the shares on the issue, and that's just dilution. And when you do have dilution, the overall valuation of a company can increase at a larger rate than the share price of that same company. And actually, we'll have a look at vicinity centers, and it's very noticeable how dilution can affect the individual investor's returns compared to how the company has increased in value. Now let's have a look at sentiment behind Sonic Healthcare. And there's only one thing to describe sentiment in regards to this company, and that is positive. In fact, there has been positive sentiment behind this company for the past 10 years. In fact, the breakout in the share price for Sonic happened in about 2012 uh, when the share price was around 11 or $12. And the share price of this company has been in a, a medium to long-term uptrend ever since then. In fact, I have included the 200-week moving average, which is the orange line. And each time the share price of Sonic Healthcare gets towards that 200-week moving average, we do see a bounce. That's probably the best time to buy into this company, when you do see the share price move towards that moving average. It hit it in 2016, again in 2018 or late 2018, and again during the COVID-19 financial panic. Right now, we have seen an acceleration in the share price over the past 18 months. In fact, the share price at the COVID-19 financial panic low was around $20, and currently the share price is just under $40. We do see a bit of difference between the 200-week moving average and the current share price. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the share price move back towards $31 over the next year. And if I do see the share price get towards $31, $32, that could be a good entry point for this company. At this point in time, even though there is positive sentiment, I do think there is potential we might see financial numbers for Sonic Healthcare be a little bit depressed, um, or suppressed, depressed, than what we saw in financial year 21. Would even be, be surprised to see lower profit, lower operating cash flow, and lower revenue for the next uh, financial year, and that could even last into, into financial year 23. Next company I want to look at is Lendlease, to code LLC. This is a property group um, company specializing in project management and construction, real estate investment and development. Mark app of Lendlease currently is $7.5 billion. That's at a share price of $10.84. And straight away, as I look at revenue for financial year 21, $9.8 billion, that is lower than it was in 2010, which was $10.5 billion. So that's a massive red cross right now. I want to see revenue to have grown over the past 11 years. 
gross margins for this business, 6.5%. Uh, and that's actually typical for these sort of property group companies, construction companies, that sort of thing. So that's not to be, uh, that's not a surprise. A profit after tax has decreased from 346 million to 222 million. Now, to be fair with Lendlease, we have seen net profit after tax a little bit higher than that over the past four or five years. So this could be just a one-off. In fact, I'd say the more likely number or typical number for net profit after tax is about 600 million. And I do think the market is pricing that in because if you look at the P/E ratio based off a profit after tax of 222 million, you get 33.8, and that's a ridiculously high for a company like Lendlease when historically the P/E ratio for this company is between 8 and 13. Operating cash flow though has grown from 228 million to 468 million, so that's almost double. Uh, it's actually more than double in the past 11 years. They have net debt of 600 million, which is not too high. Uh, priced operating cash flow 16. As I looked past in the past 11 years, uh, priced operating cash flow is just random. It goes up and down. There's no, uh, you can't say there's any historical value you should be looking for when you look at that. Not true to, not true for price to book ratio. Uh, historically, between about 1.1 and 1.6, and right now it's 1.07. So that's a little bit lower than you historically you usually see for this company. So there could be good value right now for Lendlease and that will become clear when we look at the chart because right now the share price is at an almost seven year low. As we look at the weekly chart for Lendlease, probably the best way to describe the sentiment behind this company is quite negative. In fact, the share price at $10.84 is almost at a seven year low. If we disregard the COVID-19 financial panic, then definitely it's a seven year low. Last time we saw share price at uh, this range or this area was way back in 2014 when there was actually a fair bit of positive sentiment behind this company. And that positive sentiment lasted to about 2018 when the share price reached a high of almost $22. Fair bit of volatility in the share price of this company, so maybe this could be a good trading stock. Right now, the share price is at a really good support level at just above $10.50, or around $10.50. So this could be a potential trading play right now, but with, the, with a fair bit of negative sentiment behind this company, I don't think this is a long-term a hold or even buy at this point in time. Next company I want to look at is Mineral Resources, ticker code MIN. I've really never looked at this company in the past, even though uh, some of the fund managers I do follow um, have uh, high regards for this company, and they've had high regards for this company over the past four or five years before we saw iron ore prices go through the roof. And the reason I'm mentioning iron ore prices is even though Mineral Resources call themselves a mining services company, um, firstly, they also have a portfolio of commodity projects in iron ore and lithium. So they are a mining company as well, and they are an iron ore producer. And that's why we've seen significant growth in some of these financial metrics and the share price over the past few years because the share price is highly correlated to iron ore, and I'll show you that in a few slides. Market cap of mineral resources, $7.4 billion. That's at a share price of $39.38. But when I see the growth in revenue, profit, and operating cash flow over the past 10 years, you have to be excited. Revenue has grown sixfold from $610 million to $3.7 million. Net profit after tax has almost grown tenfold from $151 million to $1.3 billion. And operating cash flow has grown by more than tenfold from $117 million to $1.3 billion. Now, the main thing is, how have those numbers been affected by the increase in iron ore prices during the past two years? We'll have a look at that again later in this video. They who do have net cash, 300 million. I always love to see a company with net cash. That's much more preferable than net debt. And when you look at some of the valuation metrics, they do seem a fairly low priced operating cash flow at 5.7. And just like Lendlease, there's no reason to, oh, there's no logic. Uh, with the historical priced operating cash flow of this company. It's very random up and down each year. But when you look at P/E ratio 5.8, historically for mineral resources, 
Our P-E ratio is typically between 6 and 12, so we are at good value, it seems like, when we look at P-E ratio, and price-to-sales ratio is in its historical norms between 1 and 2. The big question for me was, how has this company been affected by the massive increase in iron ore prices we have seen over the past two years? So just like Sonic Healthcare, I've decided to break down the growth rates in revenue, operating cash flow, and profit uh, into two periods between 2011 and 19. That's pre that rise in iron ore, and then over the past two years. And we have two totally different set of numbers here. Between 2011 and 2019, revenue grew at 10% per year, operating cash flow at 6%, and profit at only 1% per year, and the share price only grew at 3.4% per year during those years. So that's not the sort of growth you want to see in a company you do own. But over the past two years, we've seen absolutely stellar growth in this company. Revenue has grown at 71% per year, but operating cash flow and profit have grown at over 160% per year. And that's translated to the share price growth over that period. Share price has grown at 89% over the past two years. That's significant growth for any shareholders. You can definitely see that when we look at the chart. Uh, the share price has gone through the roof. But because um, mineral resources share price and their financial performance is highly correlated to iron ore, we have seen a share price pull back because iron ore prices has pulled back over the past few months. And as we have a look at mineral resources weekly chart over the past 10 years, you definitely can't see any significant appreciation in the share price between 2011 and 2019. In fact, in 2011, the share price was around $10 and then at the end of 2019, share price was around $13. So not the greatest company to have invested your money over that eight-year period. However, we did see a breakout in the share price just after COVID-19 financial panic. In fact, the share price got as low as $12 during that panic. But then the share price rose from $12 to a high of $66. And then we have seen the share price pull back from $66 to a current share price of $40. How correlated is the mineral resources share price to iron ore. What I decided to do was to overlay the iron ore prices on this chart. So let's have a look at that right now. I've just decided to zoom in um, the mineral resources share price and then overlay the iron ore prices which is represented by a solid black line here and the zooming in is for the last seven years. I just wanted to include the period between 2014 and 16, when there was a fair bit of pressure in iron ore prices, and then during that period as well, we saw mineral resource share price fall away to, to a low of about $4. And there's little doubt that the mineral resources share price is highly correlated to iron ore prices. It's definitely been true over the past two years, um, when we have seen significant rise in iron ore prices. At the same time, we saw mineral resources share price go through the roof. And then as the iron ore prices started to fall, that's exactly the same time when we saw mineral resources share price starting to fall. The only period here where there was not much correlation was uh, in 2019 when we did see a little bit of a peak in iron ore prices. At the same time, mineral resources share price just went sideways. So you can't deny here, just looking at the comparison between mineral resources share price and iron ore prices, that there is no correlation between the two. But the thing that does interest me about mineral resources is their lithium play. And because it does interest me, I'm going to do a little bit more research on what they're actually doing in this in the lithium space, because um, that can be or could be a very exciting um, sector to play in over the next five to ten years. I don't have any lithium plays right now. I do think it's running a little bit too hot. I do think some of the lithium companies out there are a little bit too overvalued. But I think in the long run, there are going to be some companies that will benefit from this whole thematic. Now, mineral resources could be one of those companies because this is a real company. A lot of lithium um companies out there on the ASX and international exchanges are not real companies. Most of them are just explorers. They're not making any money. So I prefer to take a position in a company like Mineral Resources if I am bullish 
in lithium. Fourth company I want to look at is Vicinity Centers. And before I started preparing for this video, I had absolutely no idea uh, what Vicinity Centers do, apart from they are a property group or a retail property group. I knew they were in retail, but not a retail property group. They have 61 assets under management, including 59 shopping centers. Some of the shopping centers they own include Chadstone in Melbourne, DFOs throughout the country, Queen Victoria Building in Sydney, and the My Center in Brisbane. So now I know every single time I go into the My Center, this is owned by Vicinity Centers. Their ticket code is the CX. Market for this company, $8.1 billion. That's a share price of $1.79. So the fact that they have a fairly high market with a fairly low uh, share price means they have a lot of shares on issue. And shares on issue has, have actually increased substantially over the past 10 years. I'll talk about that in the next slide. Revenue at $1.1 billion. Compares quite favorably to 2011, which was 706 million. So it seems like this company is growing. Real estate assets at 13.3 billion. That's up 50% from 2011, which was at 8.3 billion. I think it has fallen away in the past two years because of COVID-19. Uh, they were not profitable in 2011, uh, loss making at 258 million, but they were profitable in 2011 at 532 million. This is sort of times when I don't like to focus on profit after tax. I like to focus on operating cash flow because profit after tax or profit can be influenced by one off items or abnormal items, which would have happened for Facility Center in 2021. And operating cash flow has almost doubled from 2011, increasing from 344 to 647. The city centers does have net debt of 3.5 billion, which I do think um, is probably not too high for this sort of company. And you might think if they have real estate assets of 13.3 billion, net debt of 3.5 billion, the market cap should be a little bit higher than it is right now. Because if they sold all their assets, paid off their debt, they'll have net cash on their hands. Now, when you look at some of the valuation metrics, uh, price operating cash flow, 12.6 historically, that tends to be in the mid-teens for facility centers. Price to sales ratio at 6.95, historically between 6 and 10. And the price to book ratio is 0 0.8, historically between 0 0.8 and 1.1. You could argue, based off the valuation metrics, there could be some value in regards to facility centers. But I do think the market is a little bit skeptical about the medium to long term potential or future for this company because they are a retail property group uh, which uh, includes 59 shopping centers. I think the market is thinking how successful a shopping center is going to be in the future and I'm one of those people. All my other charts I use TradingView because I do prefer the TradingView um, platform um, compared to Comsec but for some reason uh, in training view, Vicini Center's share price only goes back to 2015, and I wanted a 10-year uh, chart here because there are a few interesting factors or facts about facility centers. Because when you look at the chart over the past 10 years, the share price has actually gone down, but the market cap has actually tripled over the past 10 years. So how does that happen? How can the market cap triple in 10 years, but the share price has decreased? Well, it's simple. Shares on issue have increased from 1.3 billion to 4.6 billion in 10 years. So shares on issue have more than tripled. So even though the market cap has tripled, shares on issue have more than tripled, and that means the share price has to have decreased. So even though this company has grown larger and larger over a 10 year period, there has been no returns for investors, or no capital returns for investors. In fact, the share price has gone down. So all you're getting from this company is their dividends. I would prefer capital growth and a bit of dividends uh, instead of just dividends from a company. And just for that simple reasons, the fact that the shares on issue have tripled in 10 years, the share price has gone nowhere. Uh, and I don't think there's much potential for growth in this company over the next five to 10 years. This is definitely not the sort of investable company for me. The last company I want to talk about in this video is CleanAway. And really the only reason I know anything about this company is because on occasion, one of their trucks drives by me. Ticker for CleanAway is CWY, and this is a waste management company. It was actually founded by Brambles 40, 50 years ago, which I did find 
a little bit interesting. And then Bramble sold it off to a private equity or something called KKR in 2006. And then more likely that private equity decided this to IPO this company onto the ASX um, sometime after that. Anyway, let's get into some of the financial numbers uh, in regards to CleanAway. Market at 5.8 billion at a share price of $2.84. Now what I've done with uh, CleanAway is separated their revenue, profit and operating cash flow into three segments because between 2011 and 2015, the financial state of this company actually dropped off or fell away. For instance, revenue fell from 2.2 billion to 1.4 billion. Profit after tax dropped, well, it was actually negative in 2011 and 2015, but operating cash flow fell from 254 to 176 million. It does seem 2015 was the low point for this company. It seems like this company was falling towards uh, not won't say bankruptcy, but it was becoming less and less relevant. But this company did turn around in 2015 and 16, and we have seen revenue grow from 1.4 billion to 2.4 billion. The company is now profitable at 145 million. And operating cash flow has more than doubled from 176 million to 424 million. And as we look at the chart in the next slide, you'll definitely be able to see the turnaround in this business just by looking at the chart. Capital expenditure has grown also from 149 to 239 million. They have about $500 million of net debt. They pay $500 million of leases. And as we look at the valuation metrics, one thing does stand out here, that's the P ratio. It's at 40 right now. And historically, well over the past six years, uh, it's the P ratio tends to be between 25 and 40. And that, that seems to be fairly high for this sort of company. Price to operating cash flow uh, right now is about 13.7. And over the last five years, since they've turned around the business, uh, usually the price to operating cash flow is between 11 and 14. So can't really say based off that metric whether the clean away is fairly valued, not, no, not fairly valued, but undervalued or overvalued because it's in its historical range. Price to sales ratio 2.4, and again, that's in historical range over the past six years. So I don't think there's any value right now with CleanAway looking at the valuation metrics. As we turn our attention to CleanAway's weekly chart over the past 10 years, you can definitely see when the financial state of this company started to improve. And that was back in the middle of 2016, and there was a bit of a breakout in the chart. Share price back then was about 80 to 90 cents. And from that breakout, the share price has continued to increase. So without doubt, there is a fair bit of positive sentiment behind this company. In fact, the share price right now at $2.84 is at least a 10-year high. If we look, look at that period between 2011 and that breakout in the share price 2016, nothing to get excited with this company. Share price was just meandering around, no uptrends, no downtrends. So nothing to get too excited there, but really nice positive center of buying this company right now. Um, there's been good improvement in the financial state of this company over the past six years. The question is, for me anyway, can they continue that financial momentum over the next five to six years? I don't know because I don't know too much about this company, but they might be in the right sector. Um, this sort of company, waste management company, um, could be a good growth area over that time period. That's all I have for this video, hopefully, because one of the main reasons I do these sort of videos is to share ideas with you. So hopefully some of these ideas will give you the inspiration to do more research on one or even more of these companies. I am a little bit surprised about Sonic Healthcare. I didn't think that would be as good of a performer over a 10 year period than I would find. Mineral resource is also intriguing. Clean away would need a little bit more research, but I have very little interest in vicinity centers. And what was the other company? Um, Lendlease. So very little interest in both of those companies at this point in time, except maybe for Lendlease because the share price is moving towards a seven year low, and that could be a good short term trade. Now, the last thing I should mention is I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.